Hey everyone, we're here in McFord's Garage. Welcome back. Um, today, nope, no Torino today. Today, we're working on the old F-150. Doing a trans filter change and just a fluid change, whatever, you know, replace whatever comes out with uh, just dropping a pan, not doing flush, nothing like that. But uh, truck's got 124,000 miles on it. Uh, fluid has never been changed. And we know this how. Well, here's the plug that was in the pan. This is the plug that they put in place of the dipstick tube until it gets assembled in the truck. And when they stick the dipstick tube in, they just shove it and pop this plug down into the pan and it just lays in there, rolls around, whatever. Doesn't hurt nothing. Well, this was in the pan. So, pan has never been off. Um, looks really clean in here. Even the magnet has... Doesn't have a ton of stuff on it. It's got a little bit of stuff. But it's not horrible. So, I'm going to uh, pull the magnet off. Clean the pan. Did get a new gasket even though the original factory gasket is reusable they even tell you here on the new one that the original is reusable but got a gasket from Ford got the filter from Ford so here's the filter it's made by Filtran so, but it is, or does it say, made in USA. So, got the pan off, made a little bit of a mess underneath, not too horrible. But we're going to get the pan cleaned up. And the other thing we're doing, we're going to add a drain plug. So that... Next time I want to change the fluid, I can pull the plug to drain it out and make less of a mess. So, I have to double check that there is room, but I believe I'm going to be able to put it right in the middle down here. So, I'm going to check that, make sure, make sure I don't need to like put it in a corner somewhere. But I think I can put it right down in this sump. So, um, just need to check because that fits down in the sump so just need to make sure you know I don't block this anyhow anyway I believe it probably goes down in there like so so but even with it sitting in there looks like I got enough room to put the drain plug in there so gonna double check that get the pan cleaned up drill it put the uh, drain plug in and we'll get it put back together and we'll be back all right so we have the pan clean nice and pretty spotless clean in here and the bottom side cleaned up pretty good so what we're going to do is we're going to put the drain plug right here i did some research before buying the plug and this is where people seem to do it I even saw one where they had an aftermarket pan, they had the sump, and they had a built-in drain plug in it, which is pretty nice. But, you know what, it was 10 bucks for the B&M drain plug, cheaper than buying a pan. So, uh, got to mark it on the other, flip it over, mark it on the other side, and then take a half-inch drill and drill a hole, clean up the edge, and install the plug kit. So, hopefully you'll be able to see, I'm waiting on a, uh, a frame type deal to uh, fit my GoPro in, then I can mount it to the uh, suction cup mount I bought, so it'll be easier to film this stuff. Should probably get a tripod too. Anyways, uh, now to get a wrench, and we'll fit this side, so I'm going to need 13 sixteenths. 13 16 there. So, what we did, 
got the hole drilled. I took my uh, took the Rolock sanding disc and just smoothed out the burr on both edges. And here's the uh, drain plug kit. Give you a uh, nylon washer to put on the one side to seal it. So, and from what I've read, it says to really reef out on this. So we're gonna throw the wrench on this side. And then it's 13 sixteenths. And I got the 13 sixteenths wrench here. And we're gonna tighten this nut down. get the ratchet with the longer handle get some leverage here that's about what they say so you should have about one thread showing that's pretty close. It's pretty close. Just starting to protrude out of the nut just a little. So, and it's smashed down into this. So that'll seal. And you got your drain plug. And then, bam! Next time, just a filter change, or not filter change, but just a fluid change is easy. Even the next filter change. Pull the plug, drain it all out, and uh, much less mess. Even though you do the uh, you know two bolts at one end and all, all that kind of thing to kind of just drop one end down, you still make a mess. Mainly when you're laying under the truck with a pan. If you got a hoist with a really large diameter pan on top of your coil drain, uh, cart of course it catches it easier but laying underneath without being able to jack the truck up a whole lot you can see there's not much clearance I actually just drove it up on a couple 4x4's get a little bit of height but it's enough so we're going to put this back together and don't want to forget to put the magnet on it so put the magnet on Got the magnet, so we're going to throw the filter up in there, we'll throw the pan on, and we'll be done. Alright, last part, so here we go, um, all done, we have a filter and fluid change, just the fluid that's in the pan. Uh, where is my light? I want to shine some light under here, and drain plug install. So you can see the drain plug there in the pan. So that will come in nice and handy next time I want to change the fluid to just do a fluid change, not necessarily a filter change. So probably do one every, you know, I don't know, 10, 20,000 miles. Not going to hurt anything. So the only thing that leaves now is the front diff that the fluid has not been changed on and that is because you can't get the front cover off with the axle in place you actually have to kind of take a couple bolts out and drop the axle down to get the cover off from what I've seen um, or use a suction gun and I have a suction gun and it doesn't work worth a shit. <laughs> it, it sucks at sucking. So, uh, don't use four wheel drive a lot, but, you know, I want to get it changed. The truck's got 124,000 miles on it. And I'll be doing, I did the rear end like two years ago. So that one's due for a change. Um, change the transfer case too, about two years ago. 
So that one's due for a, for a change. So we'll do those two before winter time comes. And uh, we'll be good to go. Just did oil change a couple weeks ago on it. And air filter. I do need to do the fuel filter on it. I did pick one up. Uh, but yeah, you know, you got to take care of your daily drivers because they take care of you. You know, you take care of them and then, you know, you're not spending a ton of money on those instead of the toys. So a little bit of uh, preventive maintenance should uh, avoid high maintenance. Um, yes. It's a 5.4.3 valve. Yes, it's had the phasers, chains, and tensioners done at roughly 100,000, just over 100,000 miles. Um, when you would start it up, you got about three or four seconds of noise. That was it. So I got it taken care of before it got worse. I was at Home Depot about three weeks ago or so, and a guy pulled up in similar year F-150, and it was rattling like hell. And uh, made a comment to him, and then I asked him what engine. He said, oh, same as yours. I'm like, oh, that thing is going to need, if it doesn't need an engine, it's pretty damn close because it's going to need a timing cover for as much noise as those chains were making. They were probably slapping the hell out of that cover. But, uh, anyways, take care of them and they'll take care of you. Unless you get a lemon, of course. But this truck's been pretty good. So, just doing little stuff here and there. And uh, it's been great. Bought it with 79,000 miles back in 2020 beginning of March 2020 so I've had it for three years a little over three years and I put you know 45,000 miles on it so it's been great toes great hauls great runs drives good great trucks anyways that's it hope you have a great night uh, please like subscribe share um, Hit the thing for notifications when I post new videos. Post your comments, good, bad, indifferent. But anyways, have a great night, everyone. Uh, just one more ad. Yes, I checked the fluid, make sure it was full. Took it out for about a five mile drive, came back home, checked it again to make sure it was still full and we're all good. So, trucks parked out front. Hot Rod Torino's back in the garage. Anyways, have a great night, everyone.